What a joy divine Leaning on the everlasting arms What a blessedness What a peace is mine Leaning on the everlasting arms Leaning Leaning on Jesus Leaning on Jesus Safe and secure from all alarms. Leaning on Jesus, leaning on Jesus, leaning on the everlasting arms. Shame on you, Ruby. Mooning around the house after that mad dog of a man. Ruby, go get the children out of bed and bring them down here. Women are such journey fools. hard world for little things. Oh, hi, and welcome to uh, Ward 13. Man- as you can see, Manchester's premier political opinion showcase. Hey, we're expecting a call from Melania Trump uh, today. Uh, my good friend Dave Call Pinto might call in to talk about the uh, Washington Nationals. I was just over at uh, City Hall Plaza. Uh oh. Well, maybe Ross Terrier will finally make it. <laughs> I can cancel the call for Melania. Yes, that's it. Hey, uh, one and a half million dollars. It's official now for the West High School rape, the largest Title IX settlement in history. I've got to get it out now because Ross is a member of the school board. We can't talk about it. He's, you know, they can't talk about it. Everybody else can. You don't. Nobody else does. Oh, is that you, Ross? Yes, sir. Well, now I can't talk about it. <laughs> hey, everybody there, you know, Ross's pals on the Board of Aldermen. 
And people like Rich Drudd say it's the municipal employees that bankrupt this city. Well, what about that one and a half million dollars? But you can't talk about it. Well, I can talk about it publicly. Is that a, a MAGA, Make America Great Again? Sh no. Right? We might, Melania Trump might be calling in. I had to uh, uh, call people I know. Oh, wait. So I'm, I'm coming here, and I just want to alert everybody to a certain homeless panhandling scam. I used to work in Boston. I used to hear this all the time. Oh, you come in and you're hijacking the show. No, it's yeah, a, I am hijacking the show. A disabled American. Yeah, because last week you were supposed yeah. to, he was Did supposed you? to do the show. And then you didn't even show up, and it was canceled. Pat Long was, I was supposed to give you a great guess, and Pat Long, I didn't have either one of you. You're just 603 numbers, right? Yeah. And so you I'm talking. number. Pat Long says, yeah, but I don't have it as Ross Terrio at that time. Well, did you add my name, I hope? No, I just found out I didn't. So I'm talking to Pat Long. He says, I can't make it, John. I'm in a meeting I forgot about. And Glenn R.J. Ouellette, America's, uh, what is the he? The People's Mayor. People's Mayor of Manchester, right? I should. Says yeah. that you wouldn't, how can Ross, how can Ross come to that meeting? You know, in the Glenn's voice. Yeah. And so I thought I was talking to you. <laughs> I was talking to Pat Long. I saw a picture of Glenn. Just but this is disabled American veterans. I think it says Make America Great Again. D.A.V. So... I just want to alert everybody to a certain homeless panhandling. Okay, scam. yeah. Look towards your camera. Oh, okay. Yeah. So you know, it's a fix. I used to work in Boston. I used to hear this all the time. Pretend so the homeless the homeless people will come up to you and say, "Oh, I just need a few dollars for bus fare." It's just outside the thing. Oh, I just need eight more dollars to get down to Boston. That's your um, camera. Yeah. Well, I'm looking at you. But uh, why? I don't know. <laughs> you kind of look like the homeless guy that was hitting me up for money. So, anyways, when people say, "Oh, I just need a few dollars for bus scare, uh, bus fare," it's a scam. It's a scam. Or they, there they, is no bus here. Or the other one that I've heard is, oh, my car ran out of gas and I need some money. You don't have a my, car, you know, a gas can. How are you going to put gas in your car? And you know what? Those people, I call them out. I'll say, oh, I'll buy you gas. Here, I'll put gas in your car. Oh, oh, oh. You oh. will? Yeah, but they don't want it. They want cash. All right. They want where to buy want, alcohol. Where do you want to meet? At the place that Joe Kelly uh, what is that sold synthetic spice that he was their lawyer during the synthetic uh, spice? Uh, Scandal. Oh, oh, my car. I don't have any gas. Well, I also need some tie rods. You're living after taxpayers, aren't you? Don't you have a disability? Taxpayers. I'm working. The taxpayers don't pay for the VBA. It's all in the public uh, debt. All right. Jesus, I'm not one of uh, you people, you know, taking taxpayers' you money people. as a school board <laughs> member. Professional politicians. Yeah. I'm not that professional. Yeah, but I was just saying. Amateur. You know, I'm a psychophant. I'm a, a, a dilettante. A dilettante. I'm not very good at it. Well, I, I've lost more elections than I've won. That's kind of pathetic. Uh, right? I've lost all. Everyone. I've well, at least you're consistent. Oh, we might be having. Hello, is this Melania Trump? Oh, I must have the wrong number. It says Washington D.C., and we're expecting her. Everybody <laughs> well, thinks I'm think Melania. Calls into. Oh, is that you, Dave Colapinto? Are you a baseball fan, Ross? A little bit. I used to be more when I was younger. I used to be big. You know, baseball. Bill Berry was a great player on uh, what's that thing that the goes over to the fifty World series? <laughs> <laughs> the over the hill gang. <laughs> right again. What what the hell do they call? What's uh, American Legion ball? Oh, okay. Yeah, he had a story, but I forgot it. He said, "Say it, say it on the TV," but I forgot it. Yeah, I, I, uh... Hey, are you only a guest talk? Wait a minute, I always confuse him. He's been on the show before. He I apologize me. for his poor manners. Uh... Let the guy tell you, call wait in. Wait a minute. Call, nobody ever calls into your show, Come I on. always confuse Bill with some, another professional politician that was on the Pandora panty wastes back when they had the textile league. No idea. Yeah, because you're not from New Hampshire. No, I'm Hey, not. uh, Dave is from, uh... Are you from Chicopee, Mass, Dave? No, no, I'm from Springfield, Mass. I thought you were from Chicopee with uh, Fred and Fanny Farco and the Farco family. No, that's not me. Dave, are they oh, still on. making, there used to be a gun manufacturer in Springfield. Who, who was it? it was, Springfield uh, Armory. They made 40 like Remington or Winchester. Armory, Smith and Wesson. Smith yeah, and Wesson? Smith and Wesson? Are they still out there? Colt was in Connecticut. Big gun place. Is yeah. it still, though? Are they still making guns in Springfield? Springfield, the Hartfield, and all the... They still, uh, yeah. Hartfield, uh, Hartford. Watson is called something else now. I forget what it is. But they still, they're still there. Yeah, still producing guns. Excellent. Yes. I still haven't gotten over when they ceased, uh, Colt ceased producing pistols back in 2000. 
Really? I didn't know that. I know Cole's still in business. They almost went into bankruptcy. They don't make uh, pistols anymore. That's too bad. Yeah. You're, you're a Republican. That means yeah. you're a gun nut. And I was in the Marine Corps, too. Marine Corps well, that there. doesn't mean anything. Was infantry. Well, well what, Isn't do you call, that... what do you call somebody who can't get in the Marine Corps? Somebody. Aren't An Army they, veteran. <laughs> aren't they affiliated with the Pandora Panty Wastes? No. Marine. I wanted to be Marine. Let's not get it. Dave, you called for a specific reason to tell us about the Washington Nationals baseball team. Dave is an yes, attorney. Well known uh, they're attorney. They're finally playing well, John. I didn't know. Really? Dave, what kind of what area of law do you practice in? We were we're talking about the nationals. I'm breaking in a new co host. He's a Republican, so he's wily. We're like point I, counterpoint. I represent whistleblowers. Now if Melania calls in, none of your BS. I can't imagine there's that many whistleblowers though. What? No. <laughs> Yo, oh yeah, we live in New Hampshire where they, they repealed you Republicans, you always talk about saving people money, mm. but you'll do everything yeah. to make sure a crook can steal as much as they can. When you were in control of our uh, legislature, which you still yeah. are now, you they repealed the False Claims Act. W one of the greatest ways of recovering exactly. money Exactly. We looted. don't want people to make false claims, so we had to repeal it. <laughs> don't you guys understand anything? <laughs> yeah, like uh, that, that poor girl and other things. Uh -huh. But you you can't talk about that the details. Or is, when is it finally not under seat? But let's not talk about that. But we're here to talk about the Nationals. Dave is one of the premier whistleblower attorneys in the United States. He and um, I am a I am a charter season ticket holder for the Washington Nationals, and I I passed up the game tonight in order just to come on this show and talk to you, John. Well, I told you Melania was going to be on. Wait, are, are you calling from Washington? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The New York Yankees are in town. Oh, yeah. Hey, I got two tickets yeah. for the Tigers and the Red Sox if you're uh, in town, if you have any business. Oh, when, 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 is, when is that happening? I think it's June 9th. I'm not oh, quite wow. sure. Dave, can I ask you a legal question? <laughs> well, I'm always sure. asking him. What's your opinion of the Marbury v. Madison case? <laughs> They didn't teach that it is law school. Oh, they've did. It's they the, one of the first things you learn. Yeah, I mean, we, that's our whole uh, structure of government is yeah. based on that. Now how about Paul? What is it? Paul's graph, Long Island Railroad case. Oh man, um, I, I, we're, we're here for excitement, not the oh, bore not talk people. Shop? Okay, sorry. Jeez, oh, you know, you know, I. How people about those fit in that seat? Uh, they come out. I can spin them right out of here. How about them nationals? What about the natties, huh? Jesus Christ, it's fun. Oh, excuse me. Now, I don't know. Blasphemy. I don't know a lot about the Nationals. I'll be honest, but uh, did they evolve from another team? Yeah, they you were know the how? Expos. You're a frog. You should know that. They, oh, yeah, yeah. I was, was, uh, yeah you know what's funny? Deal. Big I was, deal. I was just thinking of the Expos. I was talking to a Canadian. Oh, you I said, were you, you, you were you the other day? You were you. I was thinking about the Expos, and me I said, Ross me. <laughs> <laughs> well, I you said mean, you were a friend. Whatever happened to the Expos? I didn't you were realize. You were talking to Glenn. The, oh, maybe it was Glenn. And uh, whatever happened well, to the Glenn's Expos? Glenn's into ball, bats and balls. I didn't realize they became the Nationals. You didn't? No. Didn't How did they that. become the Nationals, uh, Mr. Colapinto? Oh, that was a Bud Selig deal. <laughs> you, Bud you, Selig, you get me going. Uh, yeah, they, they decided to... Uh, they, they, they forced uh, the sale and moved the team. I think Major League Baseball actually owned the team for a while. Wow. Hey, Kirsten, can we get another background? This one's kind of making me nauseous. I know those of you. Oh, there we go. There's a beauty. Ward 13 is love with the Ayatollah Gerard. Uh, yeah, uh, well, the Expos, after the strike, they, their audience, the strike of 94, 95, their audience never came back. And so they were all, they've been trying to get a team in Washington ever since the expansion senators left. What was it, 71, Dave, and went to Texas? Yeah, I think after 71, they went to Texas. Yeah, Ted and, Williams was uh, the manager. Really? Then uh, Washington RFK didn't Stadium. have a team until 2005. Wow. Bud Selig was... Uh, but Bowie Coon was always trying to get a team from Washington, too. He was always threatening to take over the Oakland A's. Now, 
is, is baseball, I think football, but baseball's had a huge drop in viewership, right? Oh, that's, now you're talking like a damn communist. What, what, what is it, the Marlins? They have like empty, they're playing the empty stadiums with a few thousand people? We're not talking about the Marlins. We're talking about the Natties. Well, so Dave, they're being positive. The Dave, Natties how are the Natties' about. viewership? Is, are the, is the stadium usually full? Oh, and how, huh? Yeah, I mean, it's, uh, they, they draw good crowds over there. They, and they've got a good team. I mean, they've got good records every year. Their problem is they can't get out of the first round of the postseason. Yeah. Which may, which may be uh, why you don't know too much about them. <laughs> yeah, but, you know, we've been waiting for years, this this team, to get into the uh, World Series, you know? And yeah, it just hasn't right. done that's it. Right. I was happy when the Cubbies won it. And why would you be happy that the Cubs won? That could have it, ended it, the entire like world a, as we know it. Was it was, what, over 100 years of a drought? Oh, 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 my heart's breaking. <laughs> Maybe you'd like Russia to win a, a world war. And you wonder why you can't get guests. Dave, why did you agree, <laughs> why did you agree to call in on the show anyway? Because I, I begged him. Come on. <laughs> he said he needed a guest, so I called in. Now, did you ever represent him in a, in a legal manner? No. No. All right. He, no. he was once kind of my boss. We were back at Boston University together with John, uh, yeah, yeah. John we, we Silver, go back years. Howard Zen. We go back years. Were you friends with John Silver? Oh, we were great friends with John Silver. He tried to throw me out of uh, BU. Well, yeah, I heard yeah. he didn't like you because you were always trying to shake his hand. Now that's vicious. We even us, even we didn't get that low. He was a run, he was a cunning did, run. Did Dave know um, Howard Zen? Of course. Dave, did you know Howard Zinn? Yeah, yeah. We all did. What, was your, what was your opinion of him? He's a great man. I th yeah, I mean, he was a very, very optimistic person. Oh, yeah. Uh, great, great teacher. Great uh, friend. Very, yeah, I mean, brilliant writer. I wouldn't have been out there yesterday. And I don't want to talk about well, what I was up the there reason, yesterday. Well, the reason why I'm I, I, so a lot of people, let's give some background on Howard Zinn. He wrote, he was a, a history professor. He wrote a People's, People's History, history of, of the United States. Yeah, I was there when he got the first copy. And the only it. reason why I know about this is when I saw the movie Good Will Hunting, you had uh, mm -hmm. ben, ben Affleck and um, Matt Damon. The Damon family one. were friends with the Zinn family. Yes, we know that. And so, so Matt Damon had read the book. So in the movie Good Will Hunting, he actually talks about a people's history of the United. So I was curious about it. Did some research, and and I don't mean to offend yeah. you guys, but a lot of professional scholastic historians have criticized his work as not being. Um, you, you'll understand this as a lawyer. He doesn't. His sites and his references aren't very built on solid ground. Let's say. Are they true? What he's saying? I think that's so. That's a myth. Uh, that's a that's a myth. And actually, a friend of ours yeah. coming out with a book later this year called Xenophobia, and that's a lie. he addresses each of those myths head on. He did a very academic study analysis. Ooh. He's a professor out in. Uh, out in uh, Indiana. Yeah. So xenophobia, Purdue. that would be about people who are, have a, a fear of Zen Buddhism. Yeah. Kind of. Uh, mm. Howard went through that in the 50s like everybody He was did. a Buddhist? Well, everybody went through Zen, Alan Watts. Yeah. But tell us about yeah. why, uh, why this book's come out because of a certain governor who's now the head of the University of Indiana system. Who's that? Oh, well, Dave, Dave that, is a, that would be Mitch Daniels. Oh, I remember him. Dave's a professional mouthpiece. I'm just an amateur. What? Yeah, <laughs> Mitch Daniels attacked Howard Zinn. Yeah, he did. He's dead. He did. How can he attack him? Because he doesn't want books that actually question all this patriotic gore like the uh. Ayatollah Gerard put out. He doesn't want books that tell the truth. So Mr. Daniels attacked Howard Zinn's memory or his, his work. And so one of your friends is writing a book to Rebuttal. validate it. Well, no, he's a professional historian. No, no, no. He didn't attack his memory. He, 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 just, he just didn't like his political perspective. Okay, this is what I've got to tell you. One of Howard's uh, uh, people, graduate students, is at the University of Ontario. Yeah. He came here to SNU last year, and then the union leader went after him in McCarthyism. I don't remember that at all. 
baiting him. And then Snoo said, oh, we were so sorry to bring this, this person to, to Manchester. That's the, the city you live in. Is a, that an alternative reality? I don't remember that at all. I because you don't follow real, you don't read the news. You wouldn't, it, it's a story that wouldn't have stuck in your mind because it didn't have any you know, impact to you. And you're a, being a Republican, you're into McCarthyism. Well, Abraham Lincoln, who freed the slaves, he was a Republican too. Yeah, but he's he was repudiated from your party uh, by Ronald Reagan, no, who wasn't. launched his 1980 campaign in Philadelphia, Mississippi, where three civil rights workers were murdered with a speech on states' rights, which means segregation now, segregation forever. We all know uh, that. I think you're reading too much into no, that's this. What, oh, yeah, because you know about the South, right, and about I've the traveled coded language. I stayed in a Holiday Inn in the South. My father lived in a community, a gated community in Birmingham, Alabama. I thought you were going to say in a commune. In 19, my father in 1979. It was a gated community, yeah. and they still had the thing. African Americans had to be out uh, by sundown unless you were made, living made. A kid, a football player, came to see his mother. He didn't make it out. He was shot to death. My father left that community and never went back to Alabama. That's it in 1979. Would you like me to tell you what the South was like in the 60s? So when Ronald Reagan goes to Philadelphia, Mississippi, one of the most famous lynchings mm -hmm. of, what were, do you remember, Dave, the names? Because Elizabeth Roth could tell us because she went to the school of one of them. It was Schwimmer, and uh, Norman Rockwell has a painting. Cheney and Goodwin. Good one. Yeah, Cheney, Goodwin, and was it Schwimmer? Cheney. And uh, they were freedom riders. And Norman what, Rockwell, I'll bring it in the next time. We'll have I'm his not going to hit you. saying Dick Cheney was a freedom rider? Come on, these are people that were murdered. Did you ever see the movie? Miss Watch Mississippi history. Burning. Although, oh, well, that was a good movie. Yeah, but it lies about the FBI. Why? The FBI is a corrupt Dave, and evil sorry, organization. Dave, I'm sorry, we born you. No, no, go ahead. All right. Because what you're saying is false. Ronald Reagan was elected governor just, of know, California in 1966. I, never, I knew he was a governor, but I never the heard back he went backlash to Mississippi to announce against the, the fair. It's not, it's not, the, I don't think that's a well-known fact. But see if Howard Zinn told you. I wish I could right now because I would Google everything that you're saying. And what would what would Matt Connaughton tell you? Oh, uh, I would be right because people call into Matt says, "Is he looking it up on Google?" He says, "No, it's up here." Of course, I get a few things wrong. Hey, what was uh, like the Nats record? What was the Nats record last year? Notice how yeah, we I said forget, you. But they came in first in the National League. East. Yeah, no expletive deleted. We all thought they would go deep. I know, I know. And they didn't. Tell La Ross what my record is seeing Nats games going back to the time they lost 110 games. I've been to 13 games. How many games did they win? 12. Dave. <laughs> Dave. But he won't bring me down. He's got season tickets, and I'm a good luck charm, and they refuse to bring You're me down to the playoffs. You're a Democrat. This guy's a freeloader. The only reason why he has me on his show is I buy him a beer after every show. We're going it's to only, see Candy. It's the only, the it's the only reason West why he has me on the show. He's a freeloader. But when you talked about yeah, records, we're going to see Candy after this. Dave, can you talk about his criminal record? I don't have a criminal record. I have no knowledge of he that just, criminal he just, record. He just gave up his uh, attorney-client privilege. If there was a criminal record, Ted Gatsis would have brought that out, don't you think? Does, <laughs> does John have any indecent exposure? Uh... John doesn't have anything no. to expose. Here, do you want me to drop no. trial right on the screen? No. I'm 58 years old, Ross. You don't look a day over 57. I, my, my health plan doesn't cover Viagra, unfortunately. How do you know that? What's the VA? They just give us two sticks to rub together, like back in Cub Scout days. Sometimes it works, sometimes it don't. See, if you were a... <laughs> How about the natties? Who's the, how's the manager doing? You know, actually, uh, like he's band. doing better. He actually, uh, he now gives uh, the players bear hugs every time they hit a home run. Oh, that sounds exciting. Homoerotic, huh? Homoerotic as hell. See, so pat them on the fanny like they do in the Marine Corps? Did you get patted on the no, fanny he when you're basically? He just picked them up and uh, he picked the them the up. I really think we got shots. I always regret coming on the show. Why, you're the semi official uh, co host now until they run, until the Republicans tell you no, no loot. You're probably on here just to bamboozle me. Yeah. 
Now, Dave, are you watching this on, on your computer? You think he's crazy? No. Oh. No. No. I wouldn't know how to do that. I'm worried about Melania. She just what? underwent kidney Very surgery. Attractive. I asked, seriously, the Board of Aldermen to invite her for her best mayonnaise, whatever it is, initiative, I don't know what it is, she about young people that have... Oh, I invited Donna Susie here. She's not going to be here. Who's that? Is that Rich Gerard? He's probably, come to, he's probably got a pistol in, in there. Or is he just glad to see us? He's going to challenge you to a duel. Hey, why not? Rich is a good guy. Sit beside him on the school board. <laughs> Boy, you've learned how to lie, huh? Yeah, he's a good guy. <laughs> yeah, go, go, but we'll go talk. I'll tell you a few. I, you're crazy. Do you want me to run the little Mel thing again? No. Oh, it's hilarious. Uh, Liz Rop was watching it on her cell phone. I, I wished I'd had a camera to, to get her reactions. Dave, question for Rich you. Gerard is a liar. Oh, no, he's a very he, honest man. Yeah, sure he is. He lies about me. He lies about, if he had any assets, I'd sue him for libel. Yeah, I, he as, said that... As this, Dave, as the Supreme Court once said, John Hopwood, you are slanderproof. Yeah, but Rich Gerard said that Kelly Ayotte's security told me to stay away from her. Kelly Dude. Ayotte doesn't have security. U.S. Senators don't have security. And I never had any problem with that. Rich Gerard, should. Rich Gerard is a liar. No, he's honest. You were probably stalking You're, for Kelly. Which is yeah, I, I, yeah for, for Yahoo knows. I, I get along with Kelly Ayotte. In fact, uh, Dave and other people always said I had a crush on her. Yeah, exactly. So... Uh, Hey, I admit it. So what Dave, does she do now? Uh, she works, uh, well, she helped get that egregious SOB onto the Supreme oh, Court. Oh, he was awesome. Garland? That jacket? He you can't is, be serious. He's the best Supreme Court justice in probably over 100 years. He's all the Wendell Holmes. <laughs> uh, this is shtick. You know, think of some of the, the you know, Marbury. <laughs> oh, there's Melania. Uh, think of some of the greatest Supreme Court justices ever. He, that's what he's going to... Who's the guy on the right? That's my brother, Guy. He kind of looks like you. He's who's my brother. Why wouldn't the, he look like me? who's the one on the left? That's Melania Trump. No, that's not Melania Trump. That was Melania when she was younger. No. When she was fresh please. from Slobovia. Why would you doubt me? You're lying it about... doesn't look anything like her. You're lying about Rich Gerard. Why can't I li lie about Melania being in my backyard? With a cow over her head. Yeah, I want to talk about the Whistleblower Act with Dave. What Whistleblower Act? That's we don't have one in New Hampshire. No, it's a federal. Okay, you two go at it. I want to see if that's Rich Gerard right, out there. Come right back. So, Dave. I'm sure you're, you're going to have tears in my eyes till I get back. <sighs> go ahead. It's guess for another show. So, Dave, the Whistleblower Act is a federal act. It's been around for quite a while, right? That's right. Since? You... The, uh, are you, the False Claims Act uh, was enacted during the Civil War, and people call it Lincoln's Law. Yes, I remember that. But is that does the Whistleblower Act come from that? Yeah, uh, the the False Claims Act is what is commonly referred to as key tam or whistleblower, and you sue in the name of the government against a government contractor, and. Uh, you you know you allege fraud cases filed under seal initially and the government decides whether or not to take over the case now as I remember and, don't doesn't yeah. the your client get like 20 percent of anything the government gets or 50 percent you get or? a percentage depending on whether you know you get a higher percentage if you pursue the case without the government in other words if oh. the government declines yes. intervention and you get a lower percentage if the government, uh, you know, intervenes. Jumps in, yeah. So, and takes over the case. And last year, the last, I, I guess, uh, the, in the last re year's reported uh, statistics available, uh, the government collected $3.7 billion in fraud cases, and of the, that total, $3.4 billion came from whistleblower cases that wow. were filed. So what, now what are the elements of a whistleblower case? Well, you have to show fraud, and uh, it's any government contracting situation. It also applies to Medicare fraud. So if 
That's huge. Uh, I know Medicare companies are overcharging the government. Yeah. If uh, doctors are billing twice, uh, it also applies to military contractors. Uh, you know, a whole range of mm-hmm. any, wherever there's federal dollars grants, if it is a federal grantee, uh, all of that would be covered. Now, and let me ask you this, Dave. How come all these legal shows like John Grisham and you have all these novels and these movies and they always talk to have exciting legal storylines and I've never seen a book or a movie about a whistleblower case? Why is that? Oh, there's lots of them. There's really? lots of them. Like what? Do you remember the movie The Insider? No. Uh, with Matt Damon. With, uh, Jeffrey Wigand, uh, who blew the whistle on the tobacco industry. Oh, yeah, that, that was, was the one popular. with uh, uh, Russell Crowe. Uh, Russell Crowe got an Oscar nod. I don't remember that uh, at all. I do that's remember a, good a, movie. a civil action with John Travolta, but that was at more of a personal that's injury a type. Tort. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But then there was uh, Silkwood was a uh, whistleblower oh. case. Silkwood worked at a nuclear facility. Dave started a nuclear uh, facility. And Cher played the lead role. I remember that one, yeah. Whistleblower case. Yeah. So I uh, stand corrected. Double. So we might hear about you. you, might be writing a book, or there might be a movie. Who, if, if a movie's made about your life, who do you want to be the actor? <laughs> well, Matt Damon. Who, who does Dave life. look like? Might be an uh, Ben Affleck. An, an, an authorized biography. Ben Affleck, but he's got more uh, uh, hair. Ben Affleck has more hair, or Dave? Dave does. Has more hair. So he's, Dave, you look like Ben Affleck. Yeah, with like a I, 1950s Tony Curtis I pompadour. I don't think so. If you watch my show, you know. Now, if jo- I, I would like to see John have a, a thing in the movie, and I would I have want, been in movies, and I would want Danny DeVito to play you. <laughs> <laughs> you, right, you, uh, you SOB, you uh, always got me to have uh, Bob. Possibly, possibly. Bob Bradford, young no, Bob Bradford. Gilbert Godfrey. No, Bob, Ro- I'm a Robert Redford type. Hey, let's have the camera in on me instead of this schmuck. Yeah. Robert Redford <laughs> take type. Your, take your hat off so they can see your full glory. Especially when I was younger. <laughs> Well, when I was young, uh, anybody... Now take your glasses off. Ask Keith Hirschman. Ask Keith Hirschman. Take your glasses off. When I was younger, I had a glorious uh, yellow... Well, just like Robert Redford. 40 years ago. Back in the old days. Great. Take your glasses off. That's right. Uh, So the the ladies... Robert Redford type. You're going to take your glasses off? I uh, I had blue eyes, just as... Your eyes are still blue. Your eyes don't change color. My eyes aren't blue, you lying SOB. But for for, for for tonight, we'll pretend they are. I had uh, blue eyes, just like Robert Redford. And what a physique, man. What a physique. You? Oh, yeah. It'd be something like, uh, you know, cross, uh, a young Sly Stallone. I was going to say like a small sack of potatoes. <laughs> yeah, but the only problem I had. What? You know, I, I, wa- I was going to be an actor out in Hollywood, but I, I didn't have any ass. Well, I, it fell off. Have you, so what have you been in for movies? I used to have to go around making the rounds of all the agents with an ace fruit box in my britches. Have you ever gone? Have you, you know how competitive it is to be an actor and then you're trying to get out my of the interview my, and you're shaking a pear out of your pants my brother was in the screen actors guild well, bust my buttons yeah. oh he was uh what was his name robert terrio he was in uh, what was he in in such a memorable tv series bob as, uh, terrio is his memorable tc tv series is uh bust my buttons the, the night, the night man. It was a, something like, like on FX, right? It, it was like a really cheesy series about this superhero. It was really he was an extra. He wasn't. He didn't have any parts. Uh, Josh Brolin or James Brolin had a show. What was that? Jag. I don't know. He was in. Wasn't he in Jag? I I stopped watching TV in 1975. You got a lot of parts as an extra, like small parts. You know, he'd be walking in the background. He might say, "Oh, excuse me," you know, just small rinky dink parts. Russ, do you know that 1981, the number one rated show, was Joni Loves Chachi? I don't, I don't, I don't think so. It was, for the summer. Where did that come from? Well, listen, guys, True. I got to get going. But, Thank uh, you, Dave. We didn't get to talk about the Nats. These Republicans. These Republicans. It's well, all about shutting everything down. Dave, are you, Dave, are you a Republican? <laughs> Dave, are you, no. you're a Republican, aren't you? No. Are you a Democrat? I am a Democrat. Right. I'm sorry to He's hear righteous. That. He's righteous, man. Nobody's perfect. He's from Massachusetts. So am I. 
Yeah, and look at you, a trade, a traitorous SOB. So was my great great grandfather, Alex Terry, who fought in the Civil War. Oh, great Republican. Oh. Fought against the. Uh, well, listen, I've been a pleasure talking to you guys. I got yeah, Dave, going. it was enlightening. All right, I'll check in with you, Dave, when we don't have this All irresponsible right. chatterbox on. Yeah, you just invited me on. All right, we'll talk to you later, here. guys. Thanks. Yeah, with candy. Go oh. Nats. Bye, Dave. Hey, what's the place uh, that's got the country and western theme on Elm Street? Oh, I know what you're talking about. My friends go there. I, I haven't been there. Plume, fumes, flames. Flamers, uh, they got those funny chairs out there. Oh, yes, yes, yes. I was just uh, by there the other day. Yeah, I brought my camera. Oh. Hey, you see, my, uh, Paul Ryan's got a get new out job. Of here. Diet Moxie, where'd yeah, you get that? Paul Ryan's got a new job. He's now a male model. And his first thing is Moxie. My son loves Moxie. It's an acquired taste. I think it tastes See? horrible. See? Paul Ryan. That's what happens to Republicans with big mouths, uh, Ross. They well, wind the up on... Uh, uh, big mouths. We, get, we, we wind up on CNN. Like Michael Avenatti. Michael Avenatti, I don't... He, he is obnoxious. Yeah, and he's, pro he's probably going to end the Trump presidency. No, he's probably going to go to jail for releasing that information from the wrong Michael Cohen. Oh, my. Yeah, do you believe that? I'm gonna, I'm gonna give this to my son. Okay. No, he you're loves, not. He loves Moxie. Give me that Moxie. That did you know? I believe it was invented in Maine by a pharmacist. Yeah. Went to Massachusetts. It has valerian. It's in it. now. It's now bottled right over here in Bedford. No, it's not. Yes, it is. Bedford, New Hampshire. Google it. That's a can, Ross. Yes, it's canned right here in Bedford. It's like your show's gonna be canned. <laughs> hey, you ever watch uh, Gaffalakis's Between Two Ferns? No, I don't watch television. Well, you can you can go on YouTube and watch repeats. But uh, the, he does an excellent interview with Hillary Clinton. It's right before the election. She thinks she's going to win. It's awesome. She was going to win until oh, she, lost, until she, she was going to win until yeah, Comey. She was until she lost. She was going to win until Comey released that letter. Well, Comey should have been fired. Exactly. What you, are you doing? I'm I'm uh, filming you. It's, We're going to use it on the inch the next intro because see it's the ross terrio hour I, yeah i don't like the uh the background i do you're quite uh you're quite the gay blade you know quite the cut up <laughs> uh i always regret coming on the show no you don't you, you remember how angry you were you were you were on the jim o you withstood a half hour on the jim o'connell uh, show jim can talk for hours he's a very interesting man well the half hour probably with jim o'connell saw it felt like a couple hours right here it go it just goes by so quickly so quickly you're combative <laughs> uh, my, uh ross i'm meek as my I, i'm as gentle as a kitchen you're not as bad as your public persona i'll agree with that <laughs> you haven't seen me <laughs> Oh, wait, let's talk about... You can make fun of me. It doesn't affect me for some reason. Other people. Let's talk about... I, so I was coming to the school board meeting yesterday. No, we're not going to talk about that yes, because that's a private matter. Why? I'm not going to talk about that. You were in public. What do I care? You, you the know. Supreme Court has said that when you're in public, you should have no... Talk about it on somebody public. else's show, but that's, well, that's this pri this private... This is my show, the Ross Terrio Hour. Well, but when I'm your guest... Let's change that background, Prado. Let's bring Melania Trump back on. Hopefully she'll call. Yeah, there she is. Do you have a uh, publicity release from these people? They're going to sue you. It's my brother. Well, how can Melania Trump sue me? I'm working hard to you bring know, Melania Trump to Manchester. You're upsetting all three of your viewers right now. Three? This whole town's watching you and me. They're wondering what Hoppy's going to say next. No. And you're here, what, bait him on that or this. But no, you're not like no, that. Actually, they, they, I've heard MCT does a, uh, a study of viewership. You know who's one of the top-rated shows on the show? Um, and who, to who told you this BS? People in the nude. The no. <laughs> in and the nude, huh? No Norm Moody's show, was it Norman Friends? It's one of the top-rated shows. They do a study. Why isn't it available? It is. Uh, <laughs> Joe Kelly, Lavassa show. Joe's, Joe's got the most popular show yeah. on, on this. Since uh, uh, Manstadam. The people's shows that aren't popular are the Hopwood show, the Connaughton show, the Gary Hopper show, which called... Connaughton doesn't have a show anymore. Uh, well, then that's why it's not popular. Uh, the Rock, Paper, and Grenades. Oh, everybody likes Gary. I like Gary. 
He's not obnoxious like you are. He just says horrible things. But who, who cares? It's scary. My brother had some vicious criticism of yours truly. Your brother was criticizing you? He's my older brother. He has a right to. Well, he's a full head of hair. Not bad. Uh, yeah. See, you're getting me. Yeah, but I had a, a, a chest of hair during the Burt Reynolds period. Now I, t I take that. <laughs> yeah. His hair's also remained blonde. You know, but, you know, what can you do? Any regrets? Yeah, I'm looking at her. Oh, I'm sorry. Is this a lady friend of yours? Melania Trump? Yes, you know, we're very well, close. Well, that's not Melania Trump, but I've, I've studied phrenology. I can tell that she's, that's not. How do you know that's not Melania Trump? I can, I'm an expert. There's and more I, than one John J.O.N. Hopwood. There was two in, at the Defense Language Institute in 1985 when I was there. John E. Hopwood and John C. Hopwood. Hmm. Well, anyways, who's this, uh, your lady friend? It's Melania Trump. This is going nowhere. But it is. All right. Let's if she, all right, I'm going to send her a message, call in. Let's get back to politics. All you have to do is ask Ross. Is it Ross? Are you Ross Terrio tonight? Yes. Oh, ask Matt then. How come you never come on Matt's show anymore? Because it's on radio. You don't approve of radio. Oh, because you've got radio, a full. Radio is a dying. Do you dye your hair? No, not yet. I will, though, someday. Joe Lavassa does. Radio is a dying medium. Joe Lavessa looks like something died and is crouching on his head. Radio is not a dying medium. Yes, it is. Radio is much more effective in the political spectrum than this stuff. So when Hillary Clinton runs again for presidency Clinton? in Clinton, Clinton in 2020, are you going to vote for her again? Are you going to go all in for the Clinton train? How do you know I voted for her the first time? Pretty sure you, I can tell. You don't know that. I know you weren't a Bernie guy. How do you know I'm not for Bernie? I can just tell. You're not that cool. I'm a communist. I, of course, I, I would be technically. You'd assume I'd be for Bernie, right? No, Bernie's a socialist. It, communists and socialists hate each other. Do they? Yeah. World War II. What do you know about it? Read Howard Zinn's The People's History of the United States. I was there in his outside his office when the first copies came in. So that's, you're saying that you, true. you have an auto-assigned uh, book, uh, book? I can go on. We can go on right now. I can show you emails from Howard. I can actually bring them up. How long has he been dead? Oh, jeez. Ten years. I was at his funeral. His wife. I don't know. You know, maybe I should read that book. He was a veteran, you know. World what, War II. What, what, what? He was a bombardier uh, navigator on B-17s. We used to talk about You know who else was a bombardier? Yeah, Yossarian. No, the guy who wrote Slaughterhouse-Five. No, 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 no. He was a, no, he, no, yes, no. he was shot down, and he was, and he was. Kurt Vonnegut was a scout. He was a no, scout no. at the Battle of the Bulge. I could have sworn he was on an airplane and was shot Yossarian. down. You're Syrian. You're thinking of Catch-22. You're thinking of Joseph Heller. I've got the, the memoir of Joseph Heller's daughter on, ta on CD in my car. You can have it since my CD player's. I've seen happier days. I think all you have to do is pop off the uh, battery and then put it back on. Everything resets. I'm too lazy. Being a Democrat, yeah. being a ve veteran, disabled. Hey! My wife's see a the Democrat, too. She doesn't understand money and economics. Did you see the, uh, the firemen out protesting in front of City Hall? What were they protesting? They want a contract. Um, you Republicans say it's municipal employees that bankrupted this city. What about all these payouts? $1.5 million for a Title IX case, $275,000 because somebody got arrested for taking a, uh, you know, taping or whatever we'd call it, the cops. That's an interesting really? pay, $275,000. That's a very interesting payout, don't you think? Since at the same time in Suffolk County, New York, which is right above New York City, a, a similar case was only 50000 Have you d looked into that? No. That's two hundred seventy-five. So there you got almost $2 million. But nobody can get a raise. Hmm. Because these municipal employees, folks, they'll get, every, everybody, the Everybody's going to get a raise because... 
is, as we all know, is, is that what was the meme, the Democrats' meme, that everything that was wrong with the city was Ted Gatsis's fault. And now that Joyce is in, it's always going to be unicorns and rainbows and pots of gold now, huh? Yeah, that's why she's having trouble with a Democratic board that seems to think she's Ted Gatz's. Well, and I feel bad for, for Joyce because I have some acquaintances and friends that are firefighters, and they are upset because they Why would they be upset with Joyce Crick? Because they supported her to get her elected. Now that she's in office... They still don't have a contract. They thought that they were going to get a contract. After and she Joyce did. Craig is required by law to put in a tax cap compliant budget. They should be mad with Ted Gatz's and the millions of bucks that went out for the settlements. We haven't even had an accounting. What about the millions the of dollars for Safe Station? That's costing us a fortune. A fortune. Have you, but Ted Gatz is was raving about, oh, somebody came in from California. Of course, I checked, and that wasn't true. People are How coming. How did you check? How do you have access because to Because you can look at all that stuff. The union leader was writing about this stuff. So you're saying you Google The it. union leader had all the stuff about people who came from where. There's nobody from California. You don't know that. Yes, I do. It was in the union leader. That's a bald-faced lie. <laughs> you're going to get a kick in the <laughs> blockos, buddy. You know what that means. Uh... Gatsis was an egregious chief executive. He reached the Peter Principle. Uh, What's the Peter Principle? Peter Principle, you rise to your incompetence. The guy didn't do it. Look at the city, what it's like now. I, th I like Teddy. I thought he was doing a good job. In what way, shape, or form? Take a look around. The city's bankrupt. All but it's bankrupt. It's not bankrupt. It's not bankrupt. No. Where's all the money? Where's the money for the schools, Ross? Where's the money? The, t the tax cap is challenging. There's not a lot of money, to, but we're go doing okay. No, we're not. Not according to Jim O'Connell and other people. We're not doing okay. You've got a you've got a the browning of the city. You've got all these programs that need money, and it's not there. And I'm going to tell you something. The I know you are. The, the special needs is a disaster here. It's costing us a fortune. It's an absolute disaster. But what's one of the reasons my sister moved out of, my other, one of my sisters moved out of this city. You don't want to pay for anything. You know, I have to hear Keith Hirschman, you know, when Gatsis was saying his fond goodbye with the immortal words of his chief of staff, an email is forever. Yeah, that's true. Because but for the email to the school board members, he'd have been denying that he knew anything about the sexual assault to the very, till, till, till today. Did you read the, uh, we'll, we'll talk about that another time when you're on. Because I see you're sweating. I'm not sweating. Yeah, I get you in the hot seat now. <laughs> mm -hmm. Also, you're taller and you're under a light. <laughs> oh, I'm under the lights too. But see, when you're bald, the... Uh, mm. The glare. Like when, when I see myself on TV, I'm like bright red or orange. I mean, it's like a good a, color. Like a, like a, yeah. It's a good color. It's the color of, you know, Buddhism. A little bit like, Buddhism. you remind me a little bit, not exactly of W.C. Fields. All right, I'll challenge you, Ross Terrio, challenge that me. we create a Truth and Reconciliation Commission. You and I will be on it. We'll, like we'll in start. South Africa, where like you can, South you can Africa, say whatever you want, and you're forgiven of all your crimes. Form, like no. dispensation. Former well, that's, Soviet that's Union. Truth and Reconciliation. That's not how it works. Not as much. No, Basically, you can face your crimes. Come on, cut the ball. What we will go over, okay. we will write to know everything in the last eight years of the Ted Gatz administration. We'll go over and find all sorts of monies that were dispersed, like let's say for all the drug programs and stuff, all those millions of dollars. See what happened to them, where they went. All the settlements, we'll go over if there were any tax uh, abatements that a lot that we don't know about. I can tell you one that when I went down to s the tax clerk, I said, hey, can I see the record? They said, of course. And they said, that's funny. It's not here. I've been tipped off on a certain thing. Why don't we, do, we'll do that. You know what, you know then we'll tally you up, wrong. We'll tally you up the wrong. money. You find that Ted Gatz we'll tally was up a the money. saint on earth. We'll tally up and the money. nobody could have done the job that he did. We'll tally up the money. How much has been spent? on all this stuff in the drugs 
drug rehab and Not everything. Not a clue. Six million? It was six million at one point. Seven, eight, nine, ten million? We don't know. That's one of the things when I was knocking the doors, people were asking about, because that's their money. I'm not talking about Granite Hammer, where Chief Willard had to go out and spend our tax cap money because the Republicans that surround us hate Manchester and won't give us our fair share of loot. Look at our city. We put in all these places. We put Restaurants are opening up every Sure. Day. And, okay, and another thing. We'll take the camera. We'll go and look at all the storefronts that are, all, are empty. Not that many. There's, few There's plenty. Oh, come on, Ross. There's plenty. This isn't a show for How boosterism. How are you to yourself with the rage? To tell the truth? No. When he becomes, to tell when the Ted truth? becomes our next executive counselor. Won't even get through the primary. He, you know, he covered up a rape, Ross. Come on. Sue me now again. Let's go look into that. Te I challenge Ted Gatzis to come on, go under oath. Under he oath. He tried to. Under oath. He with tried Dave to. Ryan, Chief Willard said that he called him twice, that it was a rape. It was a very brutal rape, Ross. And so did Dave Ryan. And all you Republicans, I'm not saying all, oh my God, the girl was raped. This city, it's a sh it's disgusting. You know, this is me too, right? The mm -hmm. me too world. It's affected me too. But Manchester, and New not at all. Not at all. I, I was in this studio when somebody who's a guest for comes on to me. You and another, my co defendant. Why did you go after Ted Gatzis when there's been multiple rapes in the high schools and the school boards covering them up? I was told that. I was shot. No, that's. that's, that's do, do, I know, do we know that? How can we find out? I don't know why that person said it. I was also told by another Gatz's supporter that he knew about the rape at the time it occurred. A supporter. Now, he might just be off staring me. The gaslighting. Let me ask you something. The gaslighting. Let me ask to you something. You to a false sense of security. That rape, happened in, that rape happened in September of 25th. In November, there was a notice from her lawyers that she, they were going to sue. A rape like that's a four to six million dollars. The reason you go Title IX is to spare her the brutality of going through the court system. So, in November of 2015, lawyers are informed. So, the, e the economist and the budgetary, the process, mm -hmm. they have to account for a potential liability of four to six million or possibly looking at Title IX a million. And you're telling me Mayor Gatz didn't, wasn't informed of that? That he wasn't informed about the potential liability, I then hey, come on over to the house. I'll sell it. To I my have no idea house. that. How do you know? See that this? cow over there? It's a real cow, and it jumped over the moon. I challenge Ted Gatz to go under oath. Then what? You know what, Gross? I am going to give. I am going you know to what? celebrity death match. You guys, two I am going enter, to enter, one man leaves. Okay. You go into like, tomorrow. A, like a, the Thunderdome. No, I've done my part. Uh, tomorrow, yeah. I will give a request for a conduct board to the school board and you can hail Ted Gatzis and put him on the road, Chief Willard and Dave Ryan and get the Wait, truth. you're going to do a conduct board for the school board to get... Yeah, why don't you do... have an inquiry. That, that doesn't make any sense at all. Yes, it does, Ross. No, it oh, doesn't. because you won't look into it. <laughs> Ted is not even in office anymore. Have a... You How can, can you have still a bring conduct, him. a code of conduct for somebody who's not even in government anymore. That you don't. You want to cover up this, don't you? <laughs> I don't want to cover up anything. You okay? Who's who's still at the school? That that developed Chief Willard's still an employee. Yeah, Ryan's gone. Livingston's gone. And you can't bring them here. You can't hail them here and put them under oath. He will voluntarily come. Chief Willard has nothing to cover up, nothing at all, and neither does Dave Ryan. The person most you, you bring. I'm challenging you now. I am going to put that in, and you right, bring you Ted Gatzis and the person. That's yeah, a joke. The right? person most that girl's life is shattered. The person most responsible for this is in jail. No, the gut girls. Yes, you want to. You're talking about else? after you things that happened after the You want to know fact. about Title IX? I do. It's it's a re you know about it. It's mm -hmm. the that was a record. A record, and it's about the egregiousness of the crime and the egregiousness that there was no, that it, there was no protections for her. Her constitutional rights were violated, Ross.
That's why that was the, a record, a record. So how many girls, because of that con of what I went through, but that conduct board, when I put through a conduct board and I get slammed with a strategic right. lawsuit against public participation, when not one, not one, Republican and hardly any Democrats supported me. When I wind up at the Elliott Hospital for five days, I think I have a stroke, which I've been in and out of the hospital because nobody, nobody would show support except a very a handful of people. How, how many people didn't come forward? How many yeah. girls in the climate didn't come forward and say, I'm living in fear? I live in fear now of retaliation. You? Of course I do. Of what? How naive can you be? You just you just signed off on a 1.5 million record do Title IX. Oh, don't tell me you don't know what, what Title IX is. I, that I, girls live in fi that you're you No, what are you girls. afraid of? You just said you were Retaliation. afraid. Retaliation. He could Oof. freaking sue me right now. He hit me with a slap with no merit whatsoever. Nobody says anything, Ross. You're lucky Nobody, Judge Abramson for, let you off the hook. Except for Joyce oh. Craig, who she had helped the guts you? to take him on. There was a uh, there was a rally. Done, you know, I'm not going to say about a person who wants to take on Ted Gatzis, who was out today at a protest. That guy doesn't have the guts to take on Ted Gatzis. Ross, it's a climate of fear. We live in a Me Too world, and New Hampshire, this this Manchester, will not not deal with an issue that a girl was raped. And they I did think deal that, with I it. I think. That I've sent the message. I sent the message to Tom Perez, head of the DNC. I think because we refused. You contacted Tom Perez. Yeah, why that not? That sounds kind of crazy. Why? He's the head of the DNC. Why would you contact him? You just send the message. See, you're, you're, you're not saying the thing. I would say that if this city. Why if, did you not contact Roy Buckley? If this city refuses to deal with, the, with women, the sexual. They did. They dealt with it. No, they didn't, Ross. Ross, there was a thing about a climate. Okay. Yeah, it's a joke, right? A girl <laughs> getting raped. Yeah, a girl getting not, raped is a joke. I'm not laughing about that. A girl you're, getting raped is a joke. You're People being, not talking about a rape is a joke. You're being all melodramatic. What kind of person are you that you that you would say about a girl being raped that it's melodrama or it's I'm, a, you are that. being melodramatic, John. Have you ever you ever handled a rape? I did no. when I was in the army. You know what a rape does to a woman or a girl? No idea. You've, by people not coming forward and talking about this rape, you've created a climate of fear where people won't come forward. Okay, Ross, I'll bring you on the show and I'll show you stuff I, uh, about a person that was, that se about sexual harassment. We have our own Harvey Weinstein here in Manchester. Who's that? I will tell you. You come on the show. I'll show you the stuff. I'll show you my emails to WMUR. I'll show you them to the union leader. I'll show you something. They'll probably surprise you. Nobody wants to talk about it. Nobody will. Nobody wants to touch it. Nobody wants to touch anything in this time. That's what the Me Too was about. That's what it's about. A girl was raped. A girl was raped. This community should be ashamed of yeah, the itself. The kid went to jail. Kiss, it's not about that. It's about the climate that people won't even talk about this because they're it, afraid. It has of been us. talked about. No, it hasn't. No, it hasn't at all. Yeah, you are not running anything about it. Uh, you got to head the union leader for, for getting out there and actually talking about it. And I'll just say, one of the last things was during the deliberations of the Board of Mayor and Aldermen, where Joseph Kelly Lavasser actually voted against the settlement, she said that the Aldermen could talk about it. She couldn't. And I'm sure Joyce, as mayor, being party and representing the city, couldn't. But who knows? I don't know. I really don't know. You've got a lot of passion and fire in you. Are you going to run for office this year? Here, I'll probably be heading to the border, to Massachusetts. For what? I think I know plenty, Roz. It ain't pretty. All right, uh, we'll talk about sexual harassment, but I'll show you the stuff. And then you can make a decision to go on, because I made a decision not to go forward with it, so I'm guilty too. You know? Girl was raped. And I can't, I'm not going to hold you. You did what's right, the school board. You tried to do what's right. And you couldn't talk about stuff. You have a, you're under a legal, still, you have a legal contract. But plenty of other people could have. But I went through a year of sheer hell. 
without any support from oh, Demo most so, Democrats. I'm surprised the Democrats didn't all jump on your bandwagon and help you out. We'll talk about it another time. Melania, unfortunately, didn't uh, call in, folks. No, I don't think she will. I guess I have a funny feeling. Well, she was driving around. I think your, your, your outburst, that harangue, scared her off. I Russ, when you're talking that about rape, tribe, when you're talking about rape and women, that soliloquy. That think about me off. too. It, it means something. It means something, or it means nothing. And this city refuses to take the. Dis and I'll give about Chief Willard. He went around Gatsis and went straight to the Attorney General over what happened was happening with the prosecution of abused women. Hey, Nick Willard. Hera. Take care, everybody.